Hello, my name's Mark Entzer and I am the author of Powerful Geography, a curriculum with purpose in practice. Um, as well as an author of this book, I'm author of a few other books and a test columnist, but first and foremost, I am a teacher. I'm a full-time head of geography and research lead here at Heathfield Community College. Um, and I think that's important in terms of this book. The book that I really wanted to write was a teacher I look at curriculum making and to take uh, what some very interesting uh, but academic discussions around the thinking that goes into curriculum and put it through that lens of what does a teacher do with it? What does that actually mean for those of us in the classroom? And that's what I've tried to set out. It looks at curriculum largely from the point of view of Michael Young's work on powerful knowledge. And the first part of the book, uh, the first third really, sets out this idea of the purpose of a curriculum. And it makes the argument that uh, Michael Young's view of a uh, three futures model helps us to do that, to see how perhaps we can move away from this constant pendulum swing between uh, future one, this idea of transmission of knowledge that, that all a teacher's role really is, is to take a body of agreed and approved knowledge and pass it from one generation to the next. And then that swing towards future two, this very kind of progressive model where the knowledge is largely irrelevant and we're just trying to create some kind of generic competency and the subjects are just a medium to deliver that, but the subject themselves don't particularly matter. And what Future 3 suggests and what this book suggests is that there's a way past that. And instead, we can see that knowledge can be contested and should be contested, but it is contested within academic disciplines. And that as well as trying to give pupils um, uh, kind of uh, propositional knowledge about our subjects, which is important, we're also trying to improve disciplinary thinking. We want them to think like a geographer in geography. And I suppose a historian in history might be a good idea as well. But we want them to think geographically. And so our curriculum should enable them to do that. It should create people who can think about the world in a geographical way with the powerful geographical knowledge they've got. And so part one really sets out that case. And I think that's important because I think there's still some confusion around these debates and... Certainly, if you look at things like people who've gone through Ofsted deep dives, there's this increasing expectation that every teacher will be able to discuss things like substantive knowledge and disciplinary knowledge and propositional knowledge and tacit knowledge and everyday knowledge and, and have a kind of a, a language that they can use to discuss those things. And some of the people that I've spoken to, teachers have gone through this, felt like they had been somewhat underprepared. These have been some sudden changes, and although they they had ideas, they, they found it difficult to articulate them. So I hope part one really helps with all of that, that it, it gives people that kind of grounding. So I say that's kind of the first third or so. It discusses the purpose of, of uh, education, and in particular of geography, and it talks about how over time we may have lost sight of some of those things, and we've lost sight of what geography in school is for, and it's kind of a manifesto for what geography in school could be. The second part of the book, the kind of second two thirds, moves on to how do we put that purpose into practice? So that's kind of what we go on to next. And it looks at things like well, geographical content. How do we decide what to teach in geography? Because the national curriculum, as, as I explain here, is very, very vague. People often talk about the national curriculum as though it's somehow constraining what we can look at. And, and it's very... Um, you know, detailed and we've got to get through all of this content but actually there's not that much in the key stage one two and three national curriculum so it looks to uh, primary curriculum and early secondary curriculum and says well actually what do we want to do with this how do we make those topics like rivers and coasts a geographical topic where we're looking at the geography of rivers or we're looking at the geography of settlement and population what does it mean to look at the geography of those things and it kind of talks through a process that we can use it looks at how we can study place in our geography curriculum and the role that place plays in the geography curriculum and again has some uh, practical suggestions on, on how to look at things like regional geography and regional studies 
it then goes on to talk about sequencing, which I think is very, very important and something which in the past has been a little confused in geography. We've often had kind of lots of topics which could really be studied in any order within the key stage. You know, we maybe do tectonics here because it's exciting and it helps people to select, uh, select geography as an option for GCSE or now we'll do weather and climate in um, year seven because we can do it fairly simply and we'll do it at the end because it's nice weather and we can go outside. And we just kind of have these random topics scattered throughout. This chapter talks about well, actually how we might want to sequence a curriculum so that every topic builds on the ones that have come before and how to find those threads that link the curriculum together. Then go on to talk about doing geography and what that means. And this is where we really get into some of the disciplinary thinking. It looks at things like geographical inquiry and how geographical inquiry overlapped with powerful knowledge and how we can do inquiry in a way in which pupils aren't left to simply discover for themselves and, and to uh, struggle without knowledge, but how we actually use inquiry as a curriculum structure to develop that ability to think geographically. It also looks at things like fieldwork and how we make sure that fieldwork is an effective part of the curriculum, and also uh, the use of GIS, so geographic information systems, and, and how that can be embedded within the geography curriculum. Then it goes on to look at geography for the 21st century and to consider how we future-proof our curriculum and how we respond to things like the Anthropocene, so uh, humans' ability to change the world in previously unforeseen ways, uh, issues around uh, diversity in the curriculum, um, and how we take those things into account without losing that purpose of teaching powerful geography, how we avoid it becoming a citizenship subject and we keep the geography at the heart while still making sure we address the kind of global concerns. So that's uh, the book really, uh, Powerful Geography. Um, the, the reaction to it has been brilliant. It, it really is a labour of love writing these things. You, know, it, you can imagine you know, a full-time teacher trying to find the time to sit down and to write some 60,000 words, um, best part of 200 pages on uh, curriculum thinking it's a labour of love and so seeing people's reaction it really does make it seem worthwhile so please keep discussing it um, talking about it sending ideas uh, sending me messages um, and just putting questions out there that this, this now needs to be a real dialogue as a profession about what it is we want geography to be and how we realise the vision that we have and that really is the final message of the book is that we can use this moment to really take control of curriculum as teachers. We don't need anyone's permission to do this. It is our curriculum. We create it, we enact it. Um, and that is a powerful message uh, that I think we can all embrace. So thank you for those people who have read it. If you haven't, you're really missing out. Go and get a copy. Uh, order it direct from Crown House. There is still 30% off with code SPRING30 until the end of March. Um, and let me know what you think. Okay, thank you very much.